Between siblings Dean and Lauren Nicholson, courage is something they've faced their entire lives. Born with retinitis pigmentosa and legally blind since birth, both Dean and Lauren have achieved some amazing things despite seemingly insurmountable odds. In April 2010, with help from two support riders Grant Williams and John Eder, Dean and Lauren left Perth for a gruelling journey that would take them across some of Australia's toughest terrain, a marathon ride of over 4,000 kilometres. Well, we started preparing for this ride about a year before we even did the ride and a part of that, that preparation was just getting the sponsors lined up. You know, we needed bikes, we needed um, a little bit of, a bit of funding to help us uh, do the ride. Lauren did so much of that organisation for the pre-ride stuff. Um, spent a lot of time on the phone talking with him, bouncing ideas, but he was the one ultimately that did so much of that organisation. So that took just weeks and weeks and weeks of preparation just to, to do that. And then all of a sudden we realised, hey, we need to start riding our bikes now. We need to actually prepare and start training. And uh, I remember Dean and I had a, an exercise bike just downstairs in our garages and we used to get down there a couple of times a week. or. Um, and start pedalling on our exercise bikes and uh, it was just a huge undertaking just preparing for this ride, it was, it was massive. The, the greatest challenge we had when we first set off is that we didn't know what we were doing, you know, I mean we knew where we were going but when you first set off it was a little bit of, um, you know, make it up as you go, for me it was anyway. And uh, when we were, but then after, after a couple of days it just evened out and we all knew what to expect, you know. The opportunity that Laura and I had a few years ago to do Tamworth at the Port Macquarie made me realise that I could do a lot more than just ride around home. And then this idea came from Lauren and I thought, I'd love to do it. Yeah. Who wouldn't love to ride across their own country? I remember being inspired by a man that, uh, that climbed Mount Everest, the first blind man to ever do it. And I thought, gee, that was just, just, wonderful I began thinking about some of the things that I always wanted to do things I wanted to achieve and one of those was to ride across Australia. The trek across the country would test the riders endurance and stamina as they faced rain, dust, wind, thunderstorms, flies and bitterly cold weather. I've got through school and have a good job but there are believe it or not 63 percent of blind people that don't have a job. So we're doing it not only to inspire them, but to inspire all Australians. I'm always a man for a little bit of adventure, for something new, and it's always a little hard for me to get out and, you know, enjoy the world like everyone else does, not being able to see, but certainly going out on a tan a push bike is a great way of experiencing the country, and we, we just wanted the adventure, and we also wanted to inspire other people in doing it. I've got the spike out, but I'll be able to take the disc off and get the new Avoiding large trucks and buses, riding into plagues of locusts and stopping for several flat tyres only added to the difficulties the riders faced on their epic journey. Righto. You boys have got to go first or we'll run up your ear. And then it will be really pretty. Alright, boys. On the road again. Just can't wait to get on the road again. Life I love is making music with my friends. I always enjoyed riding and thought that oh, we'll just take our time and we'd um, be able to accomplish the ride. But uh, I really had no idea how hard it was going to be. You, you know it's going to be hard, but you don't realise to what degree uh, and what impact it's going to have on you. And I think it was the second day I remember quite vividly um, riding the, the furthest and the longest I've ever ridden in my life, like 196 kilometres, which was just a gruelling day of headwind and, um, and, and pressure and high temperature. And, and we, we realised that we'd have to really be riding smart and be working together as a team. We just couldn't do it on our own. The hardest part, and I would agree a lot here with what Lauren said, was the mental battle having to get up again and again, particularly when you're feeling tired or not feeling good, uh, or when you know the other guys were struggling. And we knew that, okay, today Lauren and I had to take the lead for the whole day, you know? There was a day when Lauren and I, for 190 kilometres, rode in the lead all day. Hey, boys. The road seemed to go on and on forever. The ride is tired but elated at the end of another long and tiring day in the seat. We buckled ourselves in this morning for a long day, 
Yeah. We pulled out a Norseman, turn right, sign says Adelaide. <laughs> there was a headwind, the road was rough, it was raining, there was thunder rolling. We're thinking, all right boys, buckle in for a nine hour day today. We've just rocked into uh, Balladonia in seven hours and 11 minutes, which <laughs> was quite a surprise and quite a relief. Um, but having a distance of what, 190 190. 4.4 kilometres today, which is pretty good going. Uh, did you get any flies on your ding? Oh, I must have hit the ground in the head. <laughs> Boy, swarms of flies. Yeah, I swallowed road. one, <laughs> spat it out real quick. They just bounce off your helmet, you know. Yeah, after it ricochets off my head. Yeah. <laughs> that was a good ride though. We descended about 150 metres today, so in total. We went also went up 150. We more than that. We're down at 202 now. Oh uh, yeah. But in the middle of the day we're up to We started at, oh, we started at 300, went up to 450 and now we're back down to 200. So I need to make sure I'm stopped. Good day. This is the emergency airstrip. It's early in the morning. The sun's just coming up. The boys have probably already done about 10 kilometers. So what was it like bringing up three blind children? I don't know what it's like to bring up any other kind. I think that was normal. They did everything the rest of the children did and we didn't stop them from doing anything the rest of the children did. So it was just a normal household. They had a few limitations, didn't, you know, couldn't participate in group sports or things like that. All the things other children do, they did. They rode bikes, they had skateboards, they played with balls, they trampolined. They... Yeah, yeah, swimming pools. Yes. Lauren likes swimming pools. And how did you feel when you first found out that both Lauren and Dean were almost blind? Oh, yeah, well, that was a, a hard day. <laughs> yeah. I, I, yeah. I, didn't, I didn't think much of it at the time. I thought, oh, well, they're blind, oh. Because Julie looked after them. She was the best mother. She looked after them all the time. I went to work. Maybe I wanted to disappear from it, you know. But I went to work and uh, came home at night, and of course they're always there. And Julie always looked after them, you know. Uh, teachers say, "Oh, you must be a good dad, you know, going around with Lauren, because they hear all of his stories." And, and I say, "No, it's not me. It's his mum. That did 80 percent. Goodness. It's his mum that did 80 percent of." the work with Lauren and Dean and all, all of our children. Yeah, we have six children and three of them have retinitis pigmentosa. Yeah. For Lauren and Dean, this is what they were confronted with on their journey and what they face every day in their lives. to think that when you're on a ride like this that the physical things are going to be hard. Sore legs, sore feet, sore knees, sore back, sore backside. <laughs> but I realised you know, very quickly that it, it wasn't so much the physical challenges that were the hardest, it was really that, that battle of mental will and that determination to keep going despite any of those physical and environmental things that, that, that are really nagging at you all day to say stop, get off the bike. We really had no idea how much we were getting into. And in the end, we rode something like 170 kilometres a day. Um, that's sort of a lot more than we could have ever imagined. Um, we look back on it now and think, yeah, we did it. But it really was uh, phenomenal. It's just something that not many people had even imagined, let alone, uh, let alone plan it and do it. Yeah, great accomplishment. Finally, mate, we're on the Great Australian Bite now in South Australia. Not too far from the famous Nullarbor village. And there was little to distract them as they rode into South Australia. The brothers proudly standing overlooking the great southern coastline, but also knowing there were still thousands of kilometres left to travel before they reached their final destination. We rode about 180 kilometres today, but we're we're probably pushing 1,700 kilometres now since we left um, Perth. Perth, yeah, so... 
We rode across the South Australian border today, but we've done another, oh, no, another 100 since then, probably. Yeah, 120 since then. But we were warned beforehand, though. Don't underestimate how hard this ride is, and it's definitely true. In fact, we met a guy today, Steve, an Englishman, who had come with his mate, and they've only made it a third of the way, and his uh, mate's had a bit of an injury and an accident and has had to go home. And uh, so we don't often hear those stories about the people who don't make it, but uh, we're one of the lucky ones that have made it so far and uh, hope to continue on through to Sydney. <laughs> you might recall about 10 days ago I spoke to Dean Nicholson because he and his brother, goodness me, I'm tired saying this, would have set off from Perth 10 days ago to ride their bikes to Sydney. 4,000 kilometres cycling more than 130 kilometres a day, day in, day out, and Lauren and Dean have been legally blind their entire lives. They suffer from retinitis pigmentosa, and while you're enjoying your breakfast or lolling around, Lauren, I think, is in the middle of the Nullarbor Plain. Lauren. <laughs> How are you going there, Alan? I'm sitting down and I'm comfortable. It's air conditioned, my room. Yeah. We're, we're actually wet. We've been riding through the rain this morning. On the Nullarbor Plain? At the Nullarbor Roadhouse. Yes, we have. We're, we're at the tail end of it now, passing the, ro the Nullarbor Roadhouse. We've got 1,700 kilometres behind us now. Goodness me. You tired, sore? We are, we're tired and sore. There's not a part of your body that doesn't ache at some stage of the ride. <laughs> <laughs> From your calves to your backside. From your calves to your backside, that's exactly right. Crossing the country were... I've seen a fair amount of Australia, but never been across the Nullarbor. And with the boys coming along and get travelling slow, uh, for me, I could take a good, good look at it. Uh, Australia is fairly flat where we went, except when we got to Sydney, towards Sydney, Canberra way. But Australia is a beautiful place. Well, I can only ever really see the horizon just, and maybe if it's a clear blue sky, you could look up and see what's going on. But for, for me, it's what I'm hearing, you know, and, and it's amazing how you hear all the different types of bird wildlife, especially the black cockatoos in Western Australia, through to the you know, the galahs and so on in, in, in New South Wales, around all the wheat fields. I also feel, I guess, the temperature coming up off the road and the wind, you hear the wind and feel it blowing through native grasses or through the higher trees in some of the forests that we pass through. And even as you're riding down a hill through into a gully where you might cross a bridge with water flowing under and you feel that sort of damp mist as you're riding across that little bridge, and you hear across the rattle of the of the wooden uh, the, the wooden boards as you're riding across that bridge, it really paints this vivid picture in my mind of the countryside and what's going on around. Me. As word spread about the marathon, there were several media opportunities to promote the real reasons behind the ride. Of course, in Australia, they suggest that around 50,000 uh, Aussies actually have RP, but uh, in Australia, as Dean mentioned, there are actually 300,000 people who are blind or have low vision. It's cold, it's hot, it's raining, there's flies, there's dust, there's parts of your body that ache that you never realised you owned. And so it's definitely has been a challenge and a battle of the wills. To become the first blind people to ride tandem bikes for more than 4,000 kilometres across Australia. I was just so amazed at the people we met along the way. I remember in one town we came into an old lady had already come into the visitor centre to leave a donation. She wanted to donate to the course. She'd heard about these blind boys that had crossed, that were crossing the country and she wanted to be a part of it. A lot of the times Grant and I as the two pilot riders, and particularly the two sided riders, got to slip into the background when this was happening and we got to see the people go and meet Lauren and Dean and to have, just to see the amazement on their face, to see the appreciation they had for what they were doing and to give these people hope. I was just amazed all the time at the people that stopped us to, to donate money, to offer their encouragement, their support. It, it was just great to see so many people reaching out to, to, to support us along the way.
As the riders neared the end of their marathon journey, many people became part of the final stages as the cyclists rode through the streets, often with a police escort. It was just an amazing achievement when we finally made it to Sydney. It was a beautiful day, but the feeling of exhilaration, having achieved something so amazing. And as I looked around, you know, my family were there, my brother was there, you know, we achieved it together. And of course, for John and Grant, it was just a great experience to have done that together, to be the first person to ever ride across Australia. It just really was a nice feeling to see that there were people there who really were in amazement at what we had done. I think it's important for everyone to stand up for what they believe and do something that they're passionate about. I really love Australia and I think crossing the country is something that every Australian should do at some stage in their lifetime, although they probably shouldn't all do it on a push bike. But I believe that everyone should try their best and never give up on their dreams. As the four men stood with the Sydney Opera House as a backdrop, the significance of their achievement cannot be underestimated. With Grant and John's tremendous assistance, Dean and Lauren Nicholson are now part of Australian history, the first blind people to cycle across Australia. It was an achievement of endurance, determination and, above all, courage.